President Daniel Ortega joins us tonight from Managua, Nicaragua. Mr. President, thank you for being here. Buenas noches. Good evening. Fred Greetings. Mr. President, there are multiple human rights organizations tonight saying that some 350 people have been killed just over the past 80 days. Why are paramilitary forces involved in armed actions against those who are protesting your government? It's been a week now that turmoil has stopped. Matters are becoming more normal in the country, and there have been some demonstrations, both against and in favor of the government. It all started as a result of a law on changing Social Security, changes that were indispensable to introduce in our country. And the response was very vi totally violent. First, it started with some demonstrations at night, but then there were armed attacks on the part of paramilitary groups that started these attacks against organizations of the state, against the police, and against families that are loyal Sandinista families, and then they started blocking the entire country. They were closing the country, they started... You're saying that you don't control these paramilitary groups? If you don't control them and they're acting on behalf of the government, who controls them? These are groups that obey political organizations. Some even have elected deputies to the National Assembly. They are members of the Liberal Party. Others did not participate in, participate in the elections. They refused to do that. And they've been organizing these paramilitary groups for some time now and they have taken advantage of every small situation in launching. Mr. President, they are attacking protesters who have called for you to step down. They are attacking uh, protesters who say that you eliminated term limits that accuse you and your vice president, your wife, of setting up an authoritarian dynasty. They are attacking the Catholic Church that has spoken out against your government. So you are distancing yourself from all of these attacks? First of all, in none of the peaceful demonstrations have we been attacked. At night, when there are no peaceful demonstrations, we've had clashes provoked by the paramilitary forces, organized by people who are against the government and who have attacked and with, uh, well, first of all, we're not talking about any dynasty. It, it never occurred to me to set up a dynasty. My wife, it's the first time ever she's been vice president. She'd not been vice president before. If you aren't funding and arming these paramilitary groups, who is? Some are financed with drug trafficking. Others have tried to obtain financing from different organizations, even in the United States, organizations that have programs and activities. And they have funds, and those funds are then used to train paramilitary groups and help them get weapons. In order to murder 
decenas de policías. Tens of policemen. Se necesita ya un, un armamento de guerra. You have to use wartime weaponry. Persecución a There have been a la no persecutions of the Catholic Church. Bien, este, y los invitamos. Rather, we invite the del, del diálogo, Catholic Church to continue with the dialogue so the dialogue can grow and develop in an open manner. Mr. President, as you said, the Catholic Church was mediating discussions for some time, but now they believe, the Catholic Church believes, they're under attack by pro-government forces. We've seen the images, we've seen the video. Uh, you have the auxiliary bishop in Managua tweeting out, the government of Nicaragua crosses the limit of inhuman and immoral. The international community cannot be indifferent. This is a bishop in Managua. Obviously, the Catholic Church believes they're under attack from you. Well, that responds to a certain way of thinking. Ever since the bishop came to Nicaragua, he's been saying the same thing. Why wasn't he here during the war? He wasn't here in the country during the war. He was in Rome. There's not a single priest that we're persecuting. There's not a single priest who can claim that he's been attacked by the government, by the government officials, the church and the Episcopal Conference. We have no problems. Mr. President, the, uh, obviously the Catholic Church there on the ground believes uh, that they are under attack. Pro-government forces fired on the Divine Mercy Church in Managua. Two protesters killed inside. Uh, would you tonight condemn any attacks on a sanctuary? No ha muerto ningún nicaragüense. No Nicaraguan has died in any church. No ha muerto un solo nicaragüense. Not a single Nicaraguan has died in any church. That's false. Mr. President, to listen to the people talking, uh, that get their images out, talking about what they see are attacks, uh, and to hear their cries, take a listen to an aunt and a mother who lost students. Por favor. Please, the people, United Nations, come together to save us from this disgrace that we are living through. This is not just for the government and police to be able to do this to us. God help us during these times when Monimbo is devastated and the youth are fleeing their homes. We bury some of them. We don't know where they are taking the others. How do you respond to them? Well, the saddest thing, of course, is the loss of life. This terrorist attack, because it's really terrorism what's happening here. And in addition to seeing that mother crying because of the death of her son, there are other mothers who were shown where the bodies are burning, they tortured young people and they burn them. The situation is made public to scare people, to scare people to sow fear and terror among our people. Mr. President, this week the U.S. Congress is going to pass, we're told, a resolution condemning the violent actions of the Nicaraguan government against its citizens. Among other things, it will say, the recent protests led by students have been met with violent and brutal response. The murders and the violence have continued, torture, disappearances. The government has also shut down media outlets, denied basic medical care to protesters, and attempted to poison their food and water and sanctioned the murder of political opponents. That will pass the U.S. Congress this week. What message do you have to the U.S. that this is going to come to an end? It's totally untrue. In hospitals, they've treated everybody. There are plenty of proofs of that. There's been a campaign of lies, terrible lies, to try to hurt the image of Nicaragua and of its government and in support of activities that have become 
a lo largo de su historia more liberal. and more prevalent this is not new that the Congress of the United States deals with matters having to do with Nicaragua and that it take measures against Nicaragua. The history of our relations with the United States has been painful. I don't want to repeat it. Mr. President, 40 years ago, you were a young revolutionary fighting, as you say, a brutal family dictatorship, the Samosas. Now, the protesters on the street chant Ortega and Somoza are the same thing. To end the violence and to help your country, would you consider you and your wife stepping down from power? We were elected by the voters. So there have been electoral periods, there are term limits, and our electoral period ends in with the elections of 2021 when we will have our next elections. And then we'll have to see who will be voted in for the new administration. You agreed in May to have early elections, but then you rescinded that decision in June. Would you agree to have early elections, sir? This business of moving up the elections is something I've heard about, I've heard people talk about, but I haven't indicated that the elections need to be moved up. To move up the elections would create instability, insecurity, and make things worse. Why did you agree to this interview? What message do you have to the American people and maybe to President Trump? We are a small country with a fragile economy, but we deserve respect. We deserve respect as any state of the United States deserves respect, no matter how small that state of the Union is. They deserve respect and we equally deserve respect. We are a country in this hemisphere, in this part of the world, and we have strong links of all types with the American people. President Daniel Ortega from Managua, Nicaragua. Mr. President, thank you for the time. Gracias.